Hi, my name is Dr. Matthew Fergals. Um, I'm the clinical director of the cellular immunotherapy program at Mass General Hospital, and I'm going to tell you about a phase one study of CAR T DDBCMA, a CAR T cell uh, therapy targeting BCMA positive uh, multiple myeloma. This is a study that is a first in human study, meaning it's actually never been tested in humans before. Um, it's using a new type of binder, which is the part of the CAR T cell that can actually see the multiple myeloma disease targeting BCMA, which is a protein on the multiple myeloma surface. Um, in general, we had really encouraging results, um, and I'll take you through the study right now. So as I mentioned, this is a CAR T cell called CAR T DDBCMA. It's autologous, meaning it's coming from the patient themselves. It uses a D domain binder, which is somewhat new. And as you can see here uh, on the right, is actually much smaller than our typical single chains or camelids, which are on current CAR T cells. It's a phase one study. Patients had to be relapse refractory, meaning had to have prior IMID, PI, or CD38 targeted therapy. They had to receive at least three lines of prior therapy or be triple refractory. And we tested two dose levels, 100 million and 300 million cells. And we actually um, did an expansion cohort at dose level one. And patients received lymphodepleting chemotherapy of cytoxin and fludarabine, which is pretty standard for CAR T cells, of 300 mg per meter squared and 30 mg per meter squared. Uh, we've enrolled in Lucafruz 37 patients. At the time of the analysis, we had 31 patients who were valuable for safety and 31 who were valuable for efficacy, meaning they had reached the time points and uh, fit the window for evaluation. When we look at our patients across this dose level, the main things to point out are that we had a median age of around 66 in the total cohort, and we actually had a pretty high rate of extramedullary disease and high uh, bone marrow burden. Um, we do know that extramedullary disease is actually a risk factor for poorer outcomes in patients getting CAR T cells. And so we did have around 39% of people who um, did have extramedullary disease. And so the efficacy or the outcomes are really encouraging because of that. We had a median of five prior lines of therapy, and we had a good amount of patients who were triple refractory, so around 77% and 68% in the total cohort. So a pretty refractory group of patients who had received a lot of prior therapy. Good news is we were able to make CAR T cells for all of the patients. Um, in fact, we were able to make at least three doses of the 100 million cells for every single one of the patients on study, and the CAR T cells um, looked pretty consistent across the board. The most exciting part is that we actually had some really good efficacy. So we had 100% overall response rate, meaning that all patients um, responded to therapy. We had a 94% rate of VGPR or higher, meaning patients had at least a 90% reduction in their M protein. And uh, more importantly, we had a 71% rate of a complete response or stringent complete response rate, most of which were MRD negative or minimal residual disease, meaning we couldn't see anything in the bone marrow. Um, and in patients who did have bone marrow-based disease using next-gen sequencing. So really, really low levels of disease. And when you look at the total cohort as a whole, um, you know, especially for those patients who are beyond one year, we'll get into that, the responses do appear to be ongoing, including one out to 27 months. So, you know, breaking down the numbers tonight, what really gets me excited is that if you look at the patients who have at least 12 months of follow-up, meaning they're 12 months from their treatment, that's about 16 patients in the cohort. The other patients are still you know, waiting to move along uh, time and continue to have follow-up. And so that means that we have about a median follow-up. So we've been following patients for a median of 17.7 months. Half of patients had that high risk extramedullary disease. And at 12 months, 69% of them were in a complete response, uh, which is a, we're in an ongoing response, which is really, really exciting. Um, and I can say that even though we have a median follow-up of 17 months, more than half of the patients were still in ongoing response at 17 months. So more than half of the patients who were treated were still in ongoing response at 17 months and doing well. So again, really exciting. Um, also promising is it was very safe. So the two main side effects we worry about are CRS or cytokine release syndrome and ICANS or immune cell associated neurotoxicity syndrome. And as you can see here, we had very minimal toxicity. So we had around 88% of patients had grade one or two or low grade CRS. We had no high-grade CRS in dose level one, which is actually the expansion cohort, and what we're going to be going forward with the pivotal phase two. And we only had one event out of 25 patients in dose level one uh, who had a grade three ICANS event. Um, patients were managed with POSI and dexamethasone very successfully, and we didn't see any of that atypical neurotoxicity, the Parkinson's-like syndrome that is seen in other CAR T cell trials, uh, again, with a pretty significant follow-up at this point in time. So in summary, um, CAR T DDBCMA, it's a novel CAR T cell using a new kind of binder. We looked at two dose levels. Um, we were able to manufacture for all patients. 
we went forward with dose level one of 100 million cells for the expansion cohort. We didn't see any toxicities. We didn't see any off-target issues. In dose level one, we only had one event of grade three ICANs, no severe neuro, uh, CRS. We had no uh, delayed Parkinson-like neurotoxicity. Most importantly, we had a 100% response rate. And again, just kind of focusing on the patients who had a complete response uh, and had at least 12 months of follow-up, more than half of those patients are still doing well. Uh, with patients now being uh, successfully in remission for up to 27 months. So it's a really exciting therapy. We're starting the phase two trial, hopefully by the end of this year. Um, and we look forward to accruing more patients and hopefully getting this therapy uh, to, to people and to get more access to CAR T cells. Thank you.